The most notorious jail facility in America houses criminals for the largest city in the United States, New York City. With its large population comes the need to house many inmates. Rikers Island is called upon to complete this task. What do you know about Rikers Island and the dangerous people it holds? Let's take a look. The island is home to quite possibly the world's largest correctional institution. Although not the only jail in New York City, it is by far the largest. The daily population of Rikers Island has been reduced to almost 6,000, down from close to 10,000 in 2017. Most of this number can be attributed to COVID-19 and the push to release many offenders. New York City in total employs over 8,000 uniformed staff to keep the facilities safe. The average cost to house an offender in 2021 rose to a staggering $556,539, over $1,500 a day. In most states, the costs are closer to $30,000 a year per inmate. Rikers Island manages 100,000 admissions a year. Being a jail facility, Rikers Island houses mainly pre-trial inmates. One might think that Rikers Island is one big prison, but there are many facilities on the island. Currently, New York City DOC has eight active jail facilities on the island. At one time, there were 14. The size of the island has grown over time. It was originally only 100 acres, but now it is over 400. This was accomplished by using convict labor to fill it with ash. There is one way in and one way out of Rikers Island, the Francis Boino Bridge. It connects the island to the Queens Borough. There is also a ferry that provides service to the island. The history begins with a Dutch settler, Abraham Riken. He took possession of the island in 1664. It was sold to the city in 1884 for $180,000. The island was purchased to use as a workhouse. In 1925, the process began to convert it to a jail. The existing jail on Roosevelt Island was overcrowded and run down. The new Rikers Island opened in 1932. On an interesting note, dirt from Rikers Island was taken in 1939 to help build LaGuardia Airport. At this time, the island was also being used as a landfill. The trash was sent to Fresh Kills Landfill and the island was cleaned up to make room for jail expansion. In the early 90s, the jail was becoming overcrowded due to the exploding crime in the city. A floating jail on the barge was towed, adding more capacity on the island. In 1957, a plane crashed into the island, killing 20. Inmates helped assist with the rescue. The parole board recognized their actions and granted early release to 30 inmates, with an additional 16 receiving sentence reductions. A notable inmate at the facility is O.G. Mack, or Omar Porty. He founded 1-8 Trey Gangsters and United Blood Nation at the facility in the 1980s. In 2002, he was convicted of murder, drug, and other charges. Porty was sentenced to 50 years and is currently incarcerated at ADX Florence. In a scandal at the jail, a Salvador Dali painting was stolen from one of the dining rooms. The painting hung from 1965 to 1981. An assistant deputy warden and three correctional officers took the painting and replaced it with a fake. They were charged. Three pled guilty and one was acquitted. In another incident in 2007, a correctional captain and an assistant deputy warden were arrested for covering up an assault on an inmate. The assault occurred in front of 15 officer trainees. They then ordered the trainees to lie on the use of force form. They were not convicted until May 14, 2012. In 2008, a correctional officer, Lloyd Nicholson, was charged after using a group of teenage inmates to act as enforcers, called the program. It was meant as a system to test and control other offenders. More assaults at the jail would continue. Robert Hinton suffered facial injuries and a fractured back during an incident in 2012. Officers would claim he was physically resisting and kicked them. Part of the incident was caught on video with officers hogtying Hinton and dragging him down the hallway. Judge Tania Richard would find six officers guilty of misconduct and fired them. One of the more tragic stories at Rikers Island is Khalif Browder. He was accused of stealing a backpack and couldn't afford his $3,000 bail. He was incarcerated for three years pending his trial. The case would be dismissed in 2013. For two of his three years, Browder was in solitary confinement. In 2015, Browder would take his own life. His case highlighted the effect solitary confinement has on people. The New Yorker profiled the case, which then gained nationwide condemnation. President Barack Obama penned an opinion piece in the Washington Post. He said, We believe that when people make mistakes, they deserve the opportunity to remake their lives. There have been numerous inmate deaths at the facility resulting in massive payouts by the city and taxpayers. 
Jason Echeverria was denied medical care after ingesting a packet of powdered detergent. He would die and his family was awarded $3.8 million. Bradley Ballard was denied his schizophrenia medication for seven days. He was found naked and deceased in his cell. His family was awarded $5.75 million. In 2016, a plan was proposed to close the jail. Mayor de Blasio released a plan in 2017 detailing a 10-year plan to shut down the jail. In 2019, the City Council approved an $8 billion plan that would close Rikers Island and replace it with borough-based jails. They added that they hoped to reduce the jail population and their overall need for new jails. In popular culture, the criminals in the Marvel Universe are sent to Rikers Island to serve their time. In the movies, the jail specializes in individuals with superpowers. Rikers Island time may be coming to an end, but it will leave an everlasting legacy on the city. Rikers Island may remain the most notorious jail in America for decades to come. Let me know your thoughts on Rikers Island in the comments. If you enjoy my content, like and subscribe. As always, see you next time.